This week on the Computer Chronicles, how to fight spam. We'll show you some anti-spam tools that are already on your computer and you're probably not using them. We'll tell you about some effective anti-spam applications that you can download. We'll look at some of the possible consequences of replying to spam, identity theft, and child abuse. We'll show you MailShell, an intelligent email system that lets you customize your inbox to avoid spam. And another form of spam, pop-up ads. We'll tell you how to get rid of them. Plus, my pick of the week, a cool new way to get broadband access without wires. Fighting spam, coming up next on the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is brought to you by the Oracle Small Business Suite, one completely integrated application that helps make it easier to run your business, including accounting, sales and service, your web presence, and more. Additional funding is provided by PC to PC, the online migration service from PC First, moving files, applications, and preferences from your old computer to your new one. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. If you're an email user, and I'm sure you are, if I were to ask you what's your biggest complaint about email, I know what you would say, junk mail, all that spam that gets sent to you that clogs up your inbox and makes it harder for you to get the real mail, the stuff you really want to read. Today, we're going to help you fight spam. And what you may not know is that you probably already have some spam fighting tools on your PC that you're not using. Here to start us out with some spam fighting advice is Mike Elgin, editorial director of InterX and former editor of Windows Magazine. Hi, Mike. Hi, Stuart. Uh, let me just ask you the first basic question. Where do these guys all get my email address? Well, anytime you post your email address anywhere on the Internet, whether it's AOL chat rooms or, you know, posting on a BBS. And everybody wants you to put it in there somewhere. That's right. It's going to be harvested, put on a list, and sold to numerous spammers. So you need to be very careful and be aware that anytime you register for something, chances are your email address is going to be Got put it. on a list. All right, now what can you do? You, I know you, you've said like Outlook out, actually has some tools that you can use that most people may not be aware of. It does. There are two levels of defense. Let me show you those. Okay. Now, uh, I've got an inbox here. It's a typical Outlook. Uh, I'm going to click on uh, the Organize button over to the right uh -huh. here. And that's going to bring down a series of options. The one on the bottom here is called Junk, junk Mail. Oh. I'm going to click on that. The default is to change the color of email that Outlook thinks is junk mail. Okay. So we want to change that. That's not strong enough. We want to move it. Uh, I'm going to move automatically move junk mail to the junk email folder. It'll okay. create a junk email folder. And then we want to click to turn that on. Okay. And then we'll also want to move any adult content. Mm -hmm. It has its own uh, uh, unpublished uh, right. ways of determining what this stuff is. We want to also move that to the junk email folder. Now, you can delete it or do right. take other I mean, actions. But what are the definitions here, Mike? How, well, how are you defining junk? Well, it's looking for certain uh, things like explicit commercial messages. It, there, there are lots of, there's a long list of things that it's looking for in email. Mm -hmm. Now, this is, uh, I'll talk about the things that you can control more directly okay. in a minute, but this is the things that, you know, if they published it, then the spammers would all know how to get <laughs> okay, around it, so they keep it secret. So now I've, I've turned these things uh, on. Right. Okay, so that's, that's one level. Now, Later on, when I get email, uh, and here are some uh, some some email in my inbox. Some right. of it is junk mail. Now this looks like you know, do I need a second mortgage? That's junk mail. Sure. I, I can tell right there. So I'm going to right click on that and go down to a junk email item. I want to identify okay. that as a junk source. That's right. Now I'm going to select Add to Junk Senders gotcha. List. In addition to the things that they look for within the message, they also keep a list of everybody who sent. Where it came from. Now, that's really not as effective as it sounds because spammers change their right. send address it's all the spy time. spy versus spy going That's on. right. It actually helps filter out some of the more uh, you know, legitimate yeah, okay. advertisers. Yeah. Okay, now let's look at another thing that's more powerful. A lot of people don't use these. Under the Tools menu, you see something here called the rules wizard. Okay, uh -huh. rules are basically little macros that you can easily create to do a whole number of things, and one of them is get rid of junk mail. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to create a new one by clicking on new. Okay, and uh, the op the the default is check messages when they arrive. Uh -huh. That's good. I'm going to click next, and then here's the part that really enables you to get rid of spam. Go down here and click on the checkbox that says. Uh, either specific words in the subject, mm -hmm. specific words in the body, or my favorite, which is specific words in the subject or body. I'm going to click on that. So you can create your own rules. That's right. If somebody yeah. sends me something that says casino, okay, now I'm going to cl click add, and I'm going to tell you how you're going to prevent uh, email okay. from your mother that says casino from going to the junk okay. mail pile, and any other words that, you know, 
uh, that, that you think might come in there. And you can, again, separate uh -huh. uh, subject and so on. So I'll click OK and uh, click Next. And I want to move it to the specified folder. I'm going to move this to my junk email folder, OK, or any folder. Uh, you can also put it in Delete. I'm going to go ahead and put it in Deleted Items because I'm pretty confident in this. And go Next. There are exceptions. Uh, one of them is to uh, accept everyone in your, in your mm -hmm. Outlook uh, address book. That, that keeps your friends and colleagues from having their email put in the junk uh, email folder. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish net, that. Now, the secret sauce of this technique is that it's iterative. As junk mail slips through both of those layers of defenses, you need to look at it and, and figure out why did it get through. And then go in and add some gotcha. more keywords gotcha. and so on. And that's how you can just use some basic level. That'll filter out right there half of the junk mail you get. Right. We're almost out of time, Mike. I, I know there's some AOL things, too. We don't have time to show it, which you can go inside AOL and use, use some controls also. That's correct. Parental controls, it's all there. Yeah. Finally, just a general user tip, apart, apart from specific things, to try to avoid the volume of spam. Two things. One, use at least two email addresses. Uh -huh. One legitimate one and one public one. And the other tip is don't reply to email that comes in. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Well, in addition to specific anti-spam tools like the ones we just looked at, there are some software companies that will sell you a complete intelligent email system that includes spam fighters. One of those is a product called MailShell. And this is Aton Urbis of MailShell. Welcome, Aton. Hi, Stuart. Give me the basic idea. What do you guys do? What's your approach to fighting spam? Sure. We do two things. One is we help you get all the email you do want while blocking all the email you don't want. And once you, we separate the good from the bad, we help you manage the good so that you can be more productive, use email in more ways, uh, more efficiently. Okay. Well, it's a, it's a little fuzzy sounding, so sure. we better actually do this and show me what your approach is. Sure. So this is your site. We go to, I, I would use the MailShell mm -hmm. service and do what? You sign up at MailShell. All you need to sign up is an email address. So I use my Hotmail address to sign up, and I'm going to log into my account. And when you sign up for MailShell, what we let you do is we let you create an identity. So in this case, I would be, uh, that's my name. I can be Stuart.com, or in this case, a subdomain of MailShell.com. Or somebody at tvdemo.mailshell.com. Exactly. And you can create any address you want for wherever you go. So rather than give out your private address, uh -huh. which is how you get spam, do what Mike says. Have alternate addresses. So not only two, but a specific address for every, perhaps, purpose or, or Right. And you can either you do email. one shopping is one address for all of your shopping needs or individually. Right, for you example, have some examples. Yeah, show us. Sure. I created one for my uh, auctions on eBay. Uh, so on eBay.com, uh, I don't want to give up my private address so I get spam. I have eBay.mail at this name here. I can set spam filtering, either none, lenient, moderate, aggressive, or even very strict, only allow certain senders. I can also uh, use that to compose mail wherever I want. So I can say that whenever I send email, I want to use from that eBay address or from any other address. So let's just say you've set up all these different different uh, addresses there, mm -hmm. like Expedia, eBay, friends, investor, shopping. Right, okay. and this lets me manage the mail that I get. And what I can do too is manage how I deliver it. So that means that when mail comes into me, I can say either keep it on mail shell, I'll check my mail here, or forward it to my other private address so I can still use that private address forward it to my Hotmail account, forward it to my cell phone, my PDA. Okay. We let you get it where you want. Okay, but this is like an extreme case of people who have a couple of different email addresses. You say have as many as you want, and this way you know who, it's like when you have a, a magazine subscription, I guess, and you put a specific name so you want to know who got that. Exactly. Okay. This way, if also, if I create an address at eBay and I start seeing mail from someone else, I know that where they got it, where they got it, who is the leak. Okay. The last thing that I can do, which is important, is I can, since I want to keep my existing address, I like that address, people have it, I can use MailShell to clean the junk mail from my existing address. So I can tell MailShell, go fetch mail from, let's say, my Yahoo mail account, mm -hmm. bring it to MailShell, clean it up, clean out the junk, and then forward it again to another private address, cell phone, wherever you want. Right, so, so you don't have to switch from what you're currently using. Okay, so you use your existing email address. It's kind of, you suck it into MailShell, you clean it up, you run it through a filters, and then send it to where you want to send it. Exactly. All right, now you have a, a sort of a uh, way to, to actually have a temporary, like time expiring address too, right? Exactly. For any of these addresses, let's say I sign up at Expedia because I want to do some traveling. Now I know I'm going to do that traveling sometime in the next 60 days, I'm booking a flight. I can just set that address to automatically delete after 30, 60, 90, okay. wherever days and I again, want. And again, during that period of time, stuff you're going to get from Expedia comes to your Expedia email box. Exactly. And that way, what I can also do is, because it's coming from one source, Expedia, I may want to set the spam filtering for that to aggressive because I shouldn't be getting things right, from right, other right. sources. So I can 
do this uh, set filters as I need, set uh, controls right. as I need. A couple need. of questions. Isn't there the risk, though? I mean, sometimes you do get an email you want to read from somebody you may not know or remember that you knew. I mean, how do you, how do you deal with that problem? Um, the way you deal with that is you can, we have global filters. The way I showed you for each setting, uh -huh. you can set it to uh, my global filter, meaning anything I don't know, I can set it to a lenient setting. Also, anything I don't know, you can say if it's something that I've never approved before, deliver it to right, a safe place, right, a right, junk okay. folder, uh, wherever I want it to okay. go. Another feature I like, you can actually do tracking of your email, right? Exactly. When I go to compose mail on MailShell, it lets me do a few things. Not only can I compose from any of those addresses that I created, but I can also do two things. I can track delivery, click this box, and what that does is MailShell will tell me when that email has been received mm -hmm. and opened. Okay. It's not just the return receipt, but it's when okay. it was actually opened. And you have an encrypted option too. And huh? I can send it encrypted too in case I want to uh, complete a transaction yeah. using email, which is otherwise not secure. Okay, very cool. What's the cost to use the service? Uh, it costs uh, just under $3 a month to use MailShell, and if people want to give it a try, we have a 30-day free trial. Okay, MailShell.com. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Okay. Well, spam can be a nuisance on the way in, cluttering up your email box, but it can get even worse if you actually reply to a spam email. Here's a look at one solution to that part of the problem. When you respond to a spam email that links you to some online store, you may not realize it, but little software tools called spyware could be following you. I think that on an average Saturday afternoon, if you went shopping with your family, you wouldn't really allow someone to follow you around to every store you went into to write down every single thing that you looked at. Well, what happens on the Internet, essentially, is that you can be tracked your movements from website to website, and they're logging everything that you're looking at. For one innocent online shopper, answering a spam email turned into a nightmare. My identity was stolen by a stranger. Uh, this person was able to open an account in my name, a credit card account, without my knowing and was able to charge large purchases on this account. When she called her credit card company after seeing charges on her bill that she didn't recognize, she was surprised at what they said. The credit card companies suggested that since I spend a lot of time online, my um, information could have been found online. The person that stole my identity would have been able to find all the confidential information, such as my mother's maiden name, social security number, that sort of information, they could find that online. Indeed, the Internet is still a potentially dangerous place where a nuisance, like spam, can turn into a disaster like stolen identity. Well, a hacker could take your personal confidential information and use it to uh, perform identity theft, uh, charge things with your credit card, uh, steal your passwords on your machine, and then log into accounts and assume your identity and do things under your name. So you need to protect that confidential information on your system. A lot of vendors are shipping their machines uh, out of the box with gaping vulnerabilities that most hackers know about, uh, as well as being connected all the time uh, via DSL and cable modems. Uh, you're opening yourself to a lot more attacks. Um, if you had the facility to detect the probes, you might see from 20 a day to one a week. One solution to this problem is Internet security software which can protect your private information. Norton Internet Security protects consumer privacy in a number of ways. The first is allowing the user to protect personal confidential information on their system. So the user can designate which information they want to protect, such as a credit card number or social security number, and prevent that information from being sent to unsecured websites. If you're worried that your computer might be vulnerable, you can get a free security checkup at Symantec.com. There are several anti-spam tools available that you can download to help you eliminate spam from any POP3 email account. And here to show us a few of them is Andrew Brandt, Senior Associate Editor with PCWorld.com. Welcome, Andrew. Thank you, Stuart. Uh, first of all, I better explain what I just said for people who don't know. What's a POP3 email account? A POP3 email account is the standard Internet uh, form of uh, email. It's, it's essentially the email account that almost every ISP uses with the exception of America Online right, and uh, CompuServe. Right. Okay, fair enough. So, uh, next question would be, before we get to your specific uh, kind of spam stopper stuff, 
What's the difference between what we're going to look at and things like, like Mike showed us in Outlook, the built-in sort of filter tool? Well, Outlook has uh, a lot of the same filtering technology that the spam busting software uh, programs also have. The one uh, main difference is that with Outlook and all the other things that uh, can do the filtering, they don't have the filters built in. You have to write the rules, kind of. Every single time you get a new piece of spam, you have to add a filter it, to lock it, that one out. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at some of the ones uh, you're going to show us. First of all, Spam Killer. Sure. Uh, spam Killer is uh, a commercial piece of software. It lets you, uh, you can actually uh, get it for free and try it out for 30 okay. days if you want. Uh, what it does is, uh, like all the other programs, it does uh, go to your email account, download the mail, and then run filters against it to see uh, which stuff is spam and which stuff isn't. When it finds something that is spam, it dumps it into a killed okay. file. And when it finds something that you want to keep, it'll actually launch your application, your email program, uh -huh. and, and put it into your inbox. And if you want there. to, you can look at the killed file and say, wait a minute, I really did want to look at that. That's right. And what we did was we just checked my mailbox, and uh, there was some spam in there. And look, there's all the spam from this guy. Andrew Brandt, but all these other people. <laughs> Which you set up. Exactly. Right. And uh, wh what we're seeing here is a lot of the software uh, is it, telling you why it has bumped a lot of the uh, spam into here. And so you right, can see so kill, it's kill, looking kill, at the kill. text of the message. Yeah, it's yeah. looking at the subject lines, the yeah, senders, and uh, you know, it, it pretty much every aspect of the mail. You don't want inkjet cartridge commercials, huh? Well, no, <laughs> unfortunately not. And that was a, a particularly bad one because I got yeah, it four times. Yeah, yeah. Okay, answer. Let's take a look at another one then, which is Spam Buster. What would be the difference in Spam Buster? Uh, well, really, Spam Buster is essentially the same kind of program as Spam Killer. What it uh, its main uh, difference is that it's a it's a little bit of a cutesy thing, and a uh, more flashy stuff. It's it's a little bit more flashy, and uh, if you are really frustrated with your spam, you can launch the little Spam Busting guy and uh, and just give it a whack to take the stress out uh, of checking okay. your mail. All right, now we got another one, which is Mail Washer. How, how would that be different? Mail Washer is uh, a free program. It's, it's supported by advertising, but uh, the good news is that the ads are stored on the uh, hard drive of your machine, so you never have a privacy concern with it going okay. out to the Internet to download the ads. Sort uh, of good news that the ads are on your hard drive. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's relatively right. good news. I mean, you, okay. can, you can pay them, and they'll, uh, they'll, take, they'll give you a version that All right, you're free ads with out. ads, pay, no ads. Exactly. Okay, and uh, how is it different from uh, the two we looked at, uh, Spam Buster and Spam Killer? Well, Mail Washers is different in one important way, which is that it uh, has a, the ability to use what are called regular expressions. And this is for uh, people who are really high end spam filterers and people who get a lot of spam, uh -huh. like myself, uh, like this because you can customize your filters to a very fine degree and weed out So you go in there and tweak their filters, so a little combination of what you can do with Outlook and what you can do with these spam filters. Exactly. I mean, they all allow you to customize them. Uh, Mail Washer allows you to customize them yeah, the most. Yeah. Uh, give me some of the numbers. We think of this as a nuisance, but the fact is, I mean, it's, a, it's not only a time waster, it's a money waster, isn't that's, it? That's right. Actually, spam, uh, a, a lot of people get, b on average, between three and six spam messages a day. At least. Uh, yeah. yeah uh, some analysts assume that uh, by 2005, they're projecting that people will get somewhere around 40 spam messages per day. Wow. Now, what this is going to mean is, I mean, if you do the math, you end up with almost 1,600 messages per year. Uh, and a huge cost to both right, business, right. ISPs, and individual users. ISPs assume that uh, 2 to $3 of your monthly fee goes to dealing with the bandwidth yeah, and yeah. other needs of spam. Now, what about, again, this, this over-filtering problem? With all of these tools you showed us, Spam Killer, Spam Buster, Mail Washer, can you go in there and say, no, 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 don't block that kind of stuff? That was something I wanted to read? Yes, absolutely. And, and that's also a concern on the part of a lot of people sure. is that if they do uh, run these programs, is it going to delete mail from sure. my friends who have maybe the si part of the same yeah. email address as one of these programs? Or the AOLs and the Hotmails that are filtering for you and you're not getting stuff you want to see. Exactly. Well, unlike those ones that, that filter them and that will delete them over time, you can configure these programs so that they save your messages on the got hard it, drive and they don't go away. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Well, so far we focused on email spam. There is another form of online spam, those darn pop-up ads that get in your face and prevent you from doing what you want to do while you're online. There are ways to battle those too. Here to show us how to do that is Stephanie Olson of CNETnews.com. Welcome, Stephanie. Thank you. Let me ask you, first of all, people may not be aware of it, but there's stuff we call spyware sitting on your computer, and you don't even know it's there, sort of sucking in these pop-ups, right? Right. How does that work? Where does that come from? 
What happens a lot of times is people go out and they want to download file share programs like Music City, Morpheus, right. uh, Bear Share. There's all sorts of file sharing programs, and they come bundled because they don't have much uh, revenue source. They, they no come free lunch, right? No free lunch. So they come bundled with programs that are ad supported. So one such program is called Gator, mm -hmm. and it fills out your password score you, and it's sort of a universal password out filler. Right. And um, it comes with an advertising program called a Offer Companion. Yeah. And that follows you around the web and will deliver pop-ups to you um, whenever so it's it not just random. I mean, it, it's kind of vicious in a way. It knows what you're looking for. It's very targeted. Okay, give me an example up here, I think, somewhere with, uh, is it the FTD site? I went to the 1-800-Flowers.com yeah, oh, site. Yeah, 1-800-Flowers, right. And um, just looking for a bouquet for Valentine's Day and got a... FTD.com. Yeah. And so somebody knew that you were looking for flowers, was following you around the web, said, wait a minute, she's shopping at 800 up flowers, I'm going to show her my ad instead. Exactly. So they go through Gator to buy this space. Right, right. And then um, what 1 800 Flowers has to do is they have to um, feature their own products and sort yeah, of fight yeah, back with all yeah, these products. It's, it's a war. All right, now how do we stop some of this stuff? Let's look at some of the, the ways to get rid of that. There's something called Ad Aware, and show that to us. It's uh, um, available on download on um, CNET, mm -hmm. and this will scan for, lots of people call this type of um, program, Offer Companion, spyware, because you get it without knowing. Right, right. You know, it you don't, it sneaks into, it your, sneaks machine. into yeah. your machine. So this ad aware will um, detect what's on your machine, and so you can scan your machine. Mm -hmm. So uh, now you can configure that to sort you of work the way you want it. to get rid of certain yep. ads and so on. And so if you go into um, options right. and remove spyware right, automatically. Right. So if, somebody, if it tries to sneak in again on your machine and gets rid of it automatically, et cetera. Then you can get rid of it. All right. So there's one called Ad Aware. There's another one called Pop-Up Stopper. What's that? Yes. Pop-Up Stopper is um, a great solution for getting rid of a lot of pop-ups that are appearing on all major sites now. If you go to New York Times, if you go to Yahoo, um, I'm sure most people that surf the web are familiar with um, those X10 mm -hmm. ads about right, the tiny little surveillance right, cameras. Right. It's another program off downloads.com. Okay. Um, there's a free version and then there's a, a pro version that lots of schools and companies are using. Uh -huh. And it's a really clean uh, just toolbar that sits on your browser. All right, we're talking about pop-ups. There's even sneakier stuff called pop-unders. Explain yeah. what they are. Pop-unders pop are sneaky because they come up, you request a page, and they pop under that page. So you don't even see it right away. You don't see them come up, but you may close that browser window, and then all of a sudden you see another one. You don't know where it came from. And um, they're becoming more and more popular because... Um, so all these browser windows are opening. It's slowing your machine down. You don't know why. It's because the damn pop-unders are waiting exactly. to spring upon exactly. you. Exactly. Right, right. And, and it's slowing down your machine. It yeah, can slow yeah. down your surfing time. Gotcha. So these programs actually deal with pop-unders as well. So okay. anything that pops pop up Pop-ups, on, pop-unders, get rid of it all. Yeah. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. All right, that's our look at fighting spam online. Don't go away. I'll be back in just a moment with my pick of the week, the coolest new way to get online at broadband speed. Now for my pick of the week. If you buy a new high-end laptop these days, odds are it comes equipped with a Wi-Fi antenna and the software needed to connect to the new high-speed wireless networks that are everywhere now using a standard called 802.11b. This is very cool stuff. While you're sitting at a Starbucks at an airport in a hotel lobby, you can just open up your laptop and be surfing the web on a wireless broadband connection. But you can also do this even with your existing laptop. All you need is a relatively inexpensive 802.11b wireless PC card like this one from Action Tech. Installation is virtually automatic, and you are ready to surf the web wirelessly at high speed at thousands of public locations. For example, if you're at a Starbucks, the Wi-Fi card automatically detects the presence of an 802.11b network. And logging on is a cinch after what many of us have gone through installing DSL or cable modems. A wireless 802.11b connection just happens. No hassle. There are several public Wi-Fi network providers, MobileStar and Boingo are two of them, and you don't have to sign up for any long-term contract. Use it for an hour or so, 
pay just for the time you use. The other nice thing about having a wireless PC card is that you can set up your own 802.11b network in your house and distribute your existing DSL or cable modem connection to your laptop. All you need is something like this wireless ready network gateway and another PC card. You just stick it in the PC slot here and you've got wireless broadband connectivity from your patio to your bedroom. The PC card and the wireless ready network gateway cost about $100 each and the products I showed you are from a company called Action Tech. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. Thanks so much for joining us. If you have any questions about anything you saw on this week's show, please check out our website at computerchronicles.org. Hope we'll see you here again next time. Computer Chronicles is brought to you by the Oracle Small Business Suite, one completely integrated application that helps make it easier to run your business, including accounting, sales and service, your web presence, and more. Additional funding is provided by PC to PC, the online migration service from PC First, moving files, applications, and preferences from your old computer to your new one.